Hey, welcome to Hannity. And tonight, President Donald Trump's major address to Congress is receiving widespread praise, including from his toughest critics. And that is tonight's opening monologue. Now, President Trump's first address to a joint session of Congress was a very big moment. I, in my opinion, he knocked it out of the park, and he did so because he focused on his promises and key policy proposals. Now, in a few moments, we'll get reaction from Laura Ingram and Ann Coulter, but first, the Commander-in-Chief simply outlined all of the severe challenges, problems the country faces, then laid out his very bold solutions to fix the problems. Let's take a look. As promised, I directed the Department of Defense to develop a plan to demolish and destroy ISIS. We will work with our allies, including our friends and allies in the Muslim world, to extinguish this vile enemy from our planet. And we must support the victims of crime. I have ordered the Department of Homeland Security to create an office to serve American victims. The office is called VOICE victims of immigration crime engagement. My administration has answered the pleas of the American people for immigration enforcement and border security. By finally enforcing our immigration laws, we will raise wages, help the unemployed, save billions and billions of dollars, and make our communities safer for everyone. Tonight, I am also calling on this Congress to repeal and replace Obamacare with reforms that expand choice, increase access, lower costs, and at the same time provide better health care. Now, in my lifetime, I've never seen a president so committed to keeping his promises the way President Trump is. Now, he's literally going down a list, checking them off one by one. So now it's time for Congress to do their job, get moving, get up to the speed of Trump, because the future of the country depends on their success. Now, that means repealing, replacing Obamacare. Now, not at some point down the road, not repairing it. It's not repairable. That means getting the border wall built as soon as possible. That means slashing taxes, reforming the tax code immediately so that we can reverse the country's precipitous decline and put the millions of Americans that are out of the labor force, on food stamps, in poverty, back to work. Now, President Trump talked about the economic mess that he inherited from the Democrats. An important point. Watch this. Tonight, as I outline the next steps we must take as a country, we must honestly acknowledge the circumstances we inherited. 94 million Americans are out of the labor force. Over 43 million people are now living in poverty. And over 43 million Americans are on food stamps. More than one in five people in their prime working years are not working. We have the worst financial recovery in 65 years. In the last eight years, the past administration has put on more new debt than nearly all of the other presidents combined. Now, one of the other major takeaways from last night's address was the, just the pathetic partisan politics displayed by, by the Democrats. They sat on their hands the entire night, including when the president talked about putting America first and actually creating jobs. Watch this. America must put its own citizens first, because only then can we truly make America great again. Since my election, Ford, Fiat Chrysler, General Motors, Sprint, SoftBank, Lockheed, Intel, Walmart, and many others have announced that they will invest billions and billions of dollars in the United States and will create tens of thousands of new American jobs. Really, Nancy, you couldn't stand or clap for creating jobs. Now, it just shows how much influence the alt-radical left now has over the Democratic Party, and more importantly, that the Democrats have zero interest in working with President Trump, even though he's trying to clean up the mess that they left from their failed leftist policies. Now, that means the responsibility now to fix the country falls squarely on the shoulders of the Republicans in the House 
and the Senate. Now is the time they've got to lead. Now, just take a look at the reaction to last night's speech from the American public. CNN had a poll. 78% of people had a positive reaction to the president's speech. 69% said the policies he'd laid out would move the country in the right direction. CBS poll found the same thing. 76% of the people who watched approved of the speech, and over 60% said the address made them feel more optimistic. And take a look how the very tough, well-respected colleague, fair and balanced newsman, Chris Wallace, listen to what he said. I thought it was by far the best speech I've ever heard Donald Trump give. Uh, it was one of the best speeches in that setting I've ever heard any president give. I feel like tonight, Donald Trump became the president of the United States. That, that yes, of course, he got it. Uh, 35, 38 days ago, 40 days ago when he was sworn in, but so many Democrats didn't recognize him. I think tonight, whether they agree with him or didn't agree with him, he became the president of the United States, and everyone's going to have to accept that fact. Even Mr. Whitelash himself, Van Jones, who has repeatedly bashed President Trump, he even praised the commander-in-chief for honoring the widow for fallen Navy SEAL Ryan Owens. Listen to this. He became president of the United States in that moment period. There are a lot of people who have a lot of reason to be frustrated with him, to be fearful of him, to be mad at him. But that was one of the most extraordinary moments you have ever seen in American politics, period. So here's the bottom line. Tonight, President Trump now has the wind at his back. He has sincere, concrete plans to fulfill the promises he's made to you, the American people. We'll hold him and Congress accountable. It's pretty simple. The GOP needs to come together and get these things done.